sound speeds. And I'm going to keep my voice quite a bit lower in volume than you're used to hearing it. The reason why is because if I raise up my voice like I'm trying to be heard or more like my natural state, then you're going to be hearing my voice more strained. It's going to be like I'm trying to speak across the room to you. And I don't need to do that in this video. I want you to be able to hear my voice the way it normally is, very naturally. So I'm not going to do much post-processing. I might you know, knock out the background noise. I'm going to definitely level the sound, but then I'm also probably not going to apply much EQ at all. Maybe a roll off if I have too much handling noise later in the video, but I do want to kind of connect up a few things. So I'm going to be doing more ear training in this video. And if you're interested in what actually does happen to your voice, if you speak up and you want your voice to be heard in a noisy room, for example, then I do have a video about that. You can check out. Now I did mention ear training. But in order for me to do that, let's tackle a couple of different things like what's in the thumbnail. Off-axis sound and sound that's too far away. Let's start with a quick definition of the two. Off-axis sound. If you were to talk into a microphone, there is a place that's kind of the, the sweet spot, the place that's ideal for that microphone to pick up your voice or you, whatever sound is that you're recording. And in the case of my voice right now on the short shotgun microphone, it is pointed to my mouth is directly down the barrel on this short shotgun microphone. So my voice is in optimum fidelity and in maximum detail. Now, if I were to rotate this microphone over to the side, you're going to start to lose some detail in, in my voice. And I'll get into a little bit more about that later, but that's a just brief overview of the microphone. Just keep in mind, if it's off axis, you're not picking up the optimum detail because you're not in the sweet spot of that microphone anymore versus being too far away. If you're too far away from a microphone, you're still in the sweet spot of that microphone. You're just farther away and it's not able to pick up nearly as much acoustic vibrations in the air where it would normally be. So microphone manufacturers, when they measure microphone sp statistics, normally when they measure the specifications, they are measuring them at a distance of about one meter away. Not all manufacturers do this. Some companies like Earthworks will sometimes measure at something like 12 inches away, more around where you would actually use a microphone. But in the case of this short shotgun microphone, for example, it's about one, it's about one foot away. It's about 12 inches. So closer to a third of a meter away, which is why it's probably going to sound different than it would if you looked at the frequency response chart. Now, Here's how your voice actually works with regards to sound. Anything below about 50 hertz is completely omnidirectional. And a human voice normally starts with the fundamental vocal frequencies, the, the, the vocal folds in your throat, which I have a video about if you're interested. You can basically create a vibration in your throat as you speak. Then that vibrates and resonates at a certain frequency range. Your chest will embellish it, your head and, and your mouth will shape it and everything. Basically, there's lows, mids and highs produced by your voice. If you had even power in the lows, even power in the mids and even power in the highs, Here's the thing to, to note, the lower the frequency is, the more it's closer to being omnidirectional, right? So the lower frequencies are going to be basically scattering in all directions. So if I were to point my, my mouth completely opposite of this microphone, you're going to hear a lot of the lower frequencies in my voice while the mids and highs are directed away. They're more directional because obviously the lower frequencies are more omnidirectional. So the higher the frequency is, the more directional it's going to be. So the highs are very directional. So it's more of a narrow kind of little sliver and it's going to go a farther distance because there, it does not take a whole lot of power to shoot a higher frequency, a farther distance. Mids, they're going to be a little bit wider spread, but they're not going to go as far as the highs and lower frequencies. They're going to be going not very far at all, but very, very much around. Now that's kind of the setup for it. Let's talk about what it is to be off axis into a microphone. Now, I do want to set this up in my video where I talk about how to find your perfect, perfect voiceover microphone position. I do talk about the difference between your mouth being off axis to the microphone and the microphone being off axis to your mouth. There is a difference. I'm right now speaking past the microphone so I can blow and I'm not going to be hitting this microphone with direct wind versus 
Right there, you heard it. See the difference? So if I'm speaking past the microphone, the microphone is not on access to my mouth, but the microphone is still pointed directly at my mouth. Therefore, my mouth is on access to the microphone. See the difference? Now, this microphone right now, if I start to rotate it around, I'm going to bring it a little bit closer here. So we're going to be doing what? When we get closer, going to be picking up more bass frequencies, which is where proximity effect comes from. The whole idea of the closer you get a microphone to your mouth, the more low frequencies you're going to be hearing. The reason why is because, remember, they're dissipating. The lower frequencies are dissipating the farther you are away. And so if you get closer, they're not dissipating nearly as much. <clears throat> so if I were to get my voice right here next to this microphone, you can hear maximum detail right now. Now, listen to what happens if I start to rotate the microphone off axis. I'm going to get to the edge of the pattern where it's still within the supercardioid pattern of this microphone. But as I continue to speak the same way I've been speaking, but rotate the microphone around, now you're just starting to lose some of the highs. You hear that? As I continue to speak, you're going to be losing more and more of those highs. Now we're only really in the mids. You're hearing the mids. You're not really hearing the highs anymore. My voice now, sorry about that, that handling noise right there. My voice is now sounding kind of weird, isn't it? Because you're hearing the lows, you're hearing the mids, but you're not hearing the highs anymore. As I continue to rotate around, I'm going to try to bring the microphone closer to my mouth a little bit. So that way I'm trying to keep the microphone at the same distance away. As I continue to rotate this microphone around, you're going to be losing more and more of the mids. As as my voice continues to speak the same way and I'm going more and more off axis, you're now hearing the lower frequencies in my voice without much mids and highs. You might be hearing the mids and highs just as they're coming in the edges of the pattern, but you're not going to be hearing them very much anymore. Not like it would be if it was straight down the barrel. You're hearing mainly lower frequencies now. That's off axis because the, the sweet spot of that microphone where it's tuned in and picking up my sound is now pointed across the room. The detail in my voice is very much gone at this point. All you're hearing is the lower frequencies. And that's because the lower frequencies are omnidirectional. They're going every single direction, including into this microphone. And because my voice is still very close to the microphone, it's able to pick them up just fine. But because the microphone is tuned in at hearing sounds across the room at this point, because you know what the pattern looks like. It's more narrow and picking up at a farther distance. But my voice, my mouth is still right here. It's the frequencies that it's able to pick up that I'm, I'm kind of driving the attention to right now. The lower frequencies in my voice are making it in there because it's more omnidirectional. Mids and highs are going this direction. The microphone is going this direction. It's not able to pick them up nearly as well. Now, if I were to rotate this straight back around to my mouth, now you're hearing my voice the way it normally is. So if a microphone is off axis, you're going to start to lose the mids and highs. The highs first, then the mids, then the lower frequencies are going to probably still be there, but they're going to be falling off. Now, here's the thing. Your mouth basically makes words by chopping up the vibrations it hears in harmonics and overtones. So if you can imagine my, my throat vibrating and putting out lower frequencies, the mids and highs are basically a harmonics and overtones created by my voice as my voice is being shaped by my mouth and tongue and throat. Now, when that happens, if you can imagine vibration, and then my voice basically is naturally creating harmonics and overtones, but my tongue and my mouth chop up those vibrations to make them kind of outlined. And that kind of outlines the words that you're hearing, if that makes sense. It's kind of the way that it works. The lower frequencies are basically providing a fundamental vibration of acoustics. And then the mids and highs are going to be chopping those into more usable and understandable chunks. And by the time you add the overtones and harmonics to them, the words are what you would recognize and there's more detail in them. There's not much detail in lower frequencies. That's why when I pointed the microphone completely the opposite direction, you're still picking up the lows in my voice, but there's not much detail there. The detail comes in the way that my mouth and my lips and everything chops up that sound. 
and adds harmonics and overtones to it. So let's now talk about, that's off-axis sound. Now let's talk about what happens if this sound is too far away. I'm going to actually angle the microphone more towards my mouth a little bit, and I'm going to go in line with me where we're going to start with the microphone at the same distance as it was. Now, sorry for the, the, the handling noise there. As I start to back off on this microphone, I'm going to be raising up the volume in post. That way my voice hopefully stays about the same in, vo same in volume. But I want you to notice what's happening to my voice now. I'm going to actually go even farther away. Sorry about the handling noise. Now the microphone is probably about a foot away from, uh, not a foot, a meter away. If the camera is literally there, the microphone is about another foot past that. What does my voice sound like? You're hearing the mids and highs, but you're not hearing nearly as many lows anymore. The lows you hear might be reflections more off of hard surfaces like this laptop, or laptop, my computer monitor right here. You might be hearing it off of the desk a little bit. You might be hearing it off of other things because at this point, you're not getting a microphone close to my voice, picking it up in optimum fidelity. You're going to be hearing more of my voice reflecting off of other surfaces. But as my voice gets farther away from a microphone, you have more environmental conflict. My voice is still acoustic vibrations making its way through the air, but as it goes through the air, the air is going to be changing it, whether it's going to be regular wind, it's going to be changing the way that the, the vibrations make it to into the microphone. Or because there's no real wind here, imagine this. There's going to be acoustic and environmental sounds in this room. Those are the part of the noise, signal to noise ratio. The signal is now far away from the microphone, while the noise is going to be regular. It's going to be standard. It's the, the noise of the room but the signal is lower. So that basically means that there's a less of a difference between the low, the, the low noise and now the low signal, there's less signal to noise ratio. So when you back off on a microphone far away, like this is right now, sorry for the, the handling noise, you're hearing right now less low end. So that's the big kicker. When you take a microphone farther away, you're hearing less low end. Now, the closer this microphone gets to my mouth, the more you're going to start to hear the lower frequencies. Makes sense because remember proximity effect. Proximity effect, the lower frequencies are going to be embellished and enhanced when you bring them very close to a microphone. This microphone right now is about eight inches away from my mouth and you're going to be hearing my voice in pretty optimal fidelity at this point because it's down the barrel. So the difference between off-axis sound and sound that is too far away is quite simple. Off-axis sound starts to lose the highs, then the mids, without really affecting the lows. But if it's too far away, you're going to be losing the low-end sounds first, followed by the mids, and then last, the highs. So it's completely backwards. It's completely reversed, as a matter of fact. Off-axis, you still have that close proximity for the bass, but you don't have the detail of going down the barrel. But when you are farther away, you still have that detail. So it's picking up the way that my voice is chopping up the sounds, the mids and highs, but you're losing that low end, the vibrations coming from my chest cavity. So that's the main difference. Thanks for tuning in this episode of Soundspeed. Be sure to tune in the future for more ear training or different ways of looking at things. Maybe even hearing my voice in its normal way and not so loud and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.